Yet I pray that God will use my humble efforts so that people everywhere may hear the ultimate story of love, the story that begins once upon a tree. So when Jesus and the disciples entered the city, the crowds flooded the streets as news of his arrival spread.
Jerusalem was a dangerous place for a prophet, and Jesus knew it. But instead of being careful, he preached the truth even more boldly than ever before. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to you. How I have longed to gather your children together, and you would not. Behold, your house is left to you desolate. And I tell you, you shall not see me until you shall say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Be careful in this city. Be into the temple and began driving out those who were selling and overthrew the tables of the money changers and he said to them is it not written my house will be a house of prayer but you have made it a den of robbers and thieves the streets filled with hosannas but the Pharisees detest the sounds when God raises up Beware of the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and love to be greeted in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. Such men will be punished most severely. This town is full of danger. Pharisees and high priests didn't have to wait long for their opportunity. Judas, one of the disciples, offered to lead them to Jesus when the crowds weren't around. It was almost too good to be true, and they quickly seized the opportunity. Jerusalem would waste no time in killing this prophet. We all remember times when we've had to say goodbye. As a physician, I have been there many times when a patient knows the end is near 
I feel honored to be present as he gathers his loved ones around to say goodbye. Of course, there is always sorrow, but there is also a powerful presence in the room as someone stands on the threshold between life and death. I'm reminded of that very same feeling as I write about that last Passover meal Jesus shared with his disciples. Though his words must have confused them, it's clear now that Jesus was saying goodbye. There must have been a sweetness amidst the sorrow as he shared with them the bread and then the cup. And the words he spoke would live with them forever. And he took the cup and blessed it. The table is set, the food is prepared. We gather to share this holy meal. and swords as they come to arrest Jesus. Soon they will set into motion the hellish ordeal of a humiliating trial and a slow and torturous death. 
come, go to Gethsemane. We will follow you. I will take you there with me. We will follow you. The 
Questioning and beating Jesus most of the night, they finally took him to trial. I am still shocked by the rage of evil power that exploded on him. Even Pilate, the Judean ruler, was appalled by what they were doing to this innocent man. Pilate was ready to set Jesus free, but the crowd was relentless. His execution over and over. Crucify. 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 What has he done that he should die? Crucify. 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 
Consider the act of crucifixion and what it does to the human body. I am ashamed to be a part of the same human race that invented it. The cruelty of the cross is unbelievable. The tearing of the flesh, the exposure, the dehydration, the suffocating pressure on the lungs. How could they inflict this kind of suffering on a man who had shown such extraordinary compassion to this world? I'm still amazed. Jesus didn't fight back. He could raise people from the dead. Surely he can strike these people down. But Jesus didn't seek revenge. Instead, he did a miraculous thing that is still hard for me to fathom. He prayed for them. From the very cross on which they nailed him, Jesus prayed for his tormentors. Such an act of love is far beyond this world. It is a love that touches the depths of my soul. And the soldiers led him into the palace, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him with purple, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And then they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck him on the head with a reed, and spat upon him, and knelt down and bowed before him. And after they mocked him, they took off the purple and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. And they brought him to the place Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And 
they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots to see what each one should take. And those who passed by hurled insults at him, wagging their heads and saying, Ha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. cried with a loud voice and breathed his last. Jesus Christ, Sometimes, death can be a blessing. One of the few who stayed until they lowered Jesus down from the cross was his mother, Mary. It had been torture to stay and watch her son suffer so, but now his suffering was over. And though her heart was breaking, she must have felt a sense of relief. Jesus, now your suffering's over. Poor and tortured body, now it's time to rest. Why were they so angry? Love was turned to hate.
with every breath I take, through every day I live. Let me be a witness of this story of your heavenly love. Live your life with a great hallelujah for all that Christ has done.